seminar is called Working with Compression. In case you don't know me, I'm Fabian Giesen or Rüger Fabrosch, whichever you prefer. So um, this is not actually about writing your own compression routines, your own packers, because I think um, that's something not a lot of people are really interested in. So what the seminar is about is not about doing your own packer, but about, yeah, you already have a packer and you want to maximize compression ratio by some techniques. So um, um, this is a long seminar. We got two parts in a row with, with a small break in between. So I'll first do the outline for part one, um, which is, yeah, about 40 minutes or 45. Then we'll do a short break and then we'll continue with the second part. So um, I'll first do a small introduction, then I'll talk about some elementary techniques for compression, which you've probably heard about. And then we'll look um, in this section at a small example of how even with very simple techniques, you can get very decent um, improvements in the compression rate and the like. And for the last part, which is rather theoretical, we're going to look a bit into coding. Um, we'll see what that means later. Okay. So first for the introduction, um, okay, this is the wrong version of the slides, but I'll use them anyway. Um, 4K and 64K intros stopped being purely about code and coding several years ago. So by now you really don't have things like one effect intros uh, anymore, or well, not as much anyway, as you had to say in the mid 90s. Um, it's a lot more complex data um, generated stuff relatively fancy materials, complex meshes, complex shading, textures, and so on. So it's all very much complex by now. And it's also um, a lot of time you need to produce this amount of data. Because, yeah, I mean, this just doesn't appear on your screen. You have to work for that. And um, more importantly, if you are targeting, say, 4K or 64K, um, it also takes a lot of space but luckily, packers have gotten a lot better, better lately. So um, when you have, say, Crinkler, um, you get really, really spectacular compression ratios for 4 case without batch file droppers or the like. So um, yeah, this kind of basically hacks you would have in 4 case still a year ago. And Crinkler actually has a better compression than this kind of hacks while still being normal executable that you can really just, yeah, use everywhere. And similarly for 64K intros, I'm talking about Crunchy here because I'm most familiar with that because it's my own packer, but it goes for others as well. Um, the current Crunchy version packs FR08 into about 50 and a half kilobytes, while the final version was uh, 63 and a half kilobytes. So uh, over the last five years, um, packers, yeah, have really gotten a lot better. I mean, this is almost a quarter smaller of the old size. So there's really quite dramatic improvement in packet technology over the last few years. This not only goes for Crunchy, but basically for everything you, you would use in the scene nowadays. But um, if you want that kind of pack ratio, um, you can't just yeah, do it however you want to and just hope that it will get small later and when you use a packer. So um, to get good compression, what you actually have to do is you have to make sure that the data is in a format that, yeah, manages to compress well. And the problem about that is that to do this, um, you need to know how packers work, basically. What kind of tricks they employ to make data smaller, um, how they compress things, and this is something not a lot of people know about. Um, you don't need to know the whole details, what exactly is it coded like, um, how get certain decisions made. This is not really important. But you do need to know what kind, where the compression is achieved, what compresses well, what doesn't, and what kind of things the pack is looking for to make things smaller. And this is the type of questions I'll try to answer in the seminar, together with the question of how to make it, yeah, of how to arrange data in a way that maximizes compression ratio. And I'll assume you have some basic knowledge of C syntax. This is actually not so important anymore because I removed the slides that had any kind of code in it because they were not re really relevant. Um, you do need some programming experience. I assume you have coded some intros or some intro-like stuff before. 
because yeah, I'm making references to stuff you can only know if you've ever done an intro. And um, I have a really, really small number of mathematical formulas in there for those who are interested. It's nothing you need to understand this talk, but if you uh, are able to understand it, fine. This is just a bit more precise than what you would get from my explanation alone. Okay, so for the elementary technique session uh, or section. The first one is simply run link encoding, and I think every one of you has already done this already. This is really, yeah, basically the technique that's mentioned first in any kind of data compression text, and most people already discover it by themselves. What you do is you have a text file or whatever the image, and you try to replace runs of identical symbols with a pair that says how often that symbol appears. For example, here um, you have the string a a a a a b c c c, and it's five a's, one b, three c's. So that's what you encode. This is simple and fast, um, but um, it doesn't really work for most types of data. For example, in text data, you really can't expect any kind of compression from this because virtually, yeah, in normal English text, virtually no letter gets repeated twice, in, gets repeated more than twice in a row, which is where you would gain. Uh, so this is only interesting for specialized types of data, for example, palletized images and stuff like that. It is often used as a pre- or post-processing step for other algorithms because when you have such long runs, a lot of other methods um, get either very slow or have certain problems. So um, you can get this kind of problems away by combining this method with run length encoding. So this is where it's used. And another very common variant, for example, a variant of this is used in JPEG, is that you don't code runs of every symbol you have, but only of one special symbol, which is usually zero. So you have a lot of values which are zero and some who are not and you just code, well, here's a real value, and then there's five zeros in a row. So you only use run codes for one special symbol. And this basic encoding um, I have here, which just appends a count after each character, uh, is basically just sucks. That's the kind of encoding you see in textbooks and the like when the method is explained, but it's not something you would use. Um, I'll look into some other encodings because they yeah, this kind of coding becomes interesting later on when you see extensions of that. So the first upgrade you can do is you can use a packet-based scheme, which means that you don't store run counts for everything. You assume that there's only a few characters which are actually, rep uh, actually repeated, and the rest is basically just copied over um, because there are no runs in there. So what you do is you group this data into so-called packets, which have a variable size, which you determine during packing. And each packet has a size, and it can either be a copy packet, which just says that those end symbols which follow uh, are uncompressed, and you don't do anything with them. And there's also run packets, which means, yeah, there's just one character code following, and please repeat this character n times. Um, a set that is useful, useful, for example, for palletized images, where you have large solid color areas. That's the kind of st uh, stuff that gets compressed with run link coding. And so it's used in some um, old graphics formats. Um, and another variant to extend this is to use so-called escape codes, uh, which again assumes that most of your data um, yeah, doesn't have runs, because as I mentioned, this usually doesn't appear in real data that you have a lot of runs in all kinds of, for in, yeah, in big sections. Um, so this is assuming that you have an unused code value, which you're not using, and when that c um, you use that code value to mark, okay, now the run following, so this is a character that's repeated a few times, and yeah, well, if there are no runs in there, you can just store the data as is without this escape code and everything is 